Today's project is a heart-trimmed hat for babies, this one. The free baby size pattern is complete in this video. It is 14 inches in circumference and five and a half inches from bottom of hem to top of crown. There will be other sizes available in a written version that I'll be offering to Country Knitting of Maine News and Views magazine. You will need a couple of ounces of a number one weight yarn plus a small amount of a contrasting color. We're aiming for a stitch and row gauge of seven stitches, 10 rows per inch, which are likely to be achieved at stitch sizes six or seven on most standard gauge machines. If you need to go shopping for yarn and don't want to mail order, the best one is Michael's Wool-like Yarn. It's soft and our knitting machines like it, and it should get the gauge. It's also washable. You'll need two colors, and one skein of the main color is plenty. Just an oddment of the contrasting color will do. You'll see me knitting the sample on my Brother 892. For that, the main knitting is stitch size 7. The Fair Isle knitting is stitch size 7, and the under layer of the hem is stitch size 6. You may use any standard gauge punch card machine. You'll want to watch this movie so that you can create your card, and included in this movie are instructions for utilizing the card on not only the Brother family of machines, but also the Singer Studio Silver Reed family. It's only slightly different, but you'll need the information if you're new. For this project, though not for every project, we begin with the point of the hearts going downward into the card reader. The card making video shows you how to find the first row and then lock the card in that position. Do this before beginning the project. Here I'm locked and ready to go. This dial is presently set to KC for patterning, but as long as we turn the dial to N on a brother or stock Annette on the stitch selector dial of the Singer Studio type machine, it'll still knit stock Annette regardless of the fact that the card is present. On the Singer type of machine, bringing the lever my thumb is on all the way towards you locks the card on a row. If you're getting a straight line of those feelers, it's a non-patterning row. So advance the card until you see this. Those are the points of the hearts. And this is our first patterning row. Cast on by e-wrapping 100 needles. At the smaller of your two determined stitch sizes, knit 20 rows. For brothers, before knitting the 20th row, turn to KC so that when you knit from left to right, needles will select as they have. For singers, just knit the 20 rows. After doing so, turn from stockinette to fair aisle settings. All machines will benefit from hanging a couple of claw weights now. Sometimes you may need more than one on each end. Set the carriage for fair aisle knitting. Increase the stitch size one whole number from the interior hem stitch size, and we'll leave it at this number from now on. Insert color two in feeder two, and knit six rows. Remove color two and return to stockinette settings. We're completely done with color two. From now on, we just knit it. We do need to finish the hem, so knit four more plain stockinette rows, then lift the e wraps and hang them on the working needle. You may hang every single e-wrap, but for this project, hanging every other e-wrap on every other needle is adequate to close the hem neatly. When the hem is complete, I like to bring all of the needles forward and knit the first row back from hole. This makes it easier for the carriage to knit back the stitch plus e-wrap that are on the needles. Be sure to set the carriage so that it will knit back from home. And knit 40 plain stockinette rows in main yarn, or you can use odds and ends and stripe this section. Snip the yarn, leaving a good long yarn tail. Thread that tail into a yarn needle and start running it through each live stitch in a row. Work all the way across, making sure to catch each stitch because if we miss any, they will run. But when you don't have reach anymore, your fingers can't find the next stitches, 
it's okay to drop the stitches that have already been put onto the gathering yarn off of the machine so that you do have access room because they're safely on that yarn. Remember, this is only a standard gauge gathering thread, so don't be rough with it because it's not strong enough to take real yanking, but it should do the job as long as you just keep that in mind. What we have created is a hung hem with the addition of Fair Isle. All hung hems look much, much better and the stitches assume their correct proportions only after we pull them downward. You can use your fingertips, or here I'm inserting what's meant to be a loom hook. It is a loom hook, but it also works for going inside the bottom of the hem and giving the downward tug the hem needs to look its best. Now, tightly gather in the thread that went through every single stitch and stitch across the top O that it makes a couple of times. More if you want to for security. Seam the two edges of the knitting together. Here I'm back stitching and I'm working right next to each edge column of stitches, but any tidy seam that you like is acceptable. The pattern does allow one whole stitch on each edge for a seam. When you reach the hem, shorten the contrasting color yarn tails Tuck them inside the hem. Now seam the two layers of hem separately. One good method is to work the exterior first so you can really concern yourself with looks. And here I'm choosing to mattress stitch it. At the bottom of the fold, turn and now seam the inside. If you don't like mattress stitching, you can always whip stitch the inside. It's really not going to show. It's just that it makes the hat much neater to seam the layers separately. Tie off the two yarn tails, weave in the one we've been working with, snip it on. It's just not really weaving in. You just have to go into the tunnel made by the two layers of hat. Thread the second one onto the needle and do the same. And voila, our hat. I have a few more projects with this punch card planned, so stay tuned.